Hi, Stampers. Welcome. I have got a super cute project for you today. I had someone message me saying that they needed some ideas for um, Valentine's Day, like little treat holder things. So I started thinking, you know, any of those things that we did for um, stocking stuffers for Christmas, those can be used um, for Valentine's Day as well. All we got to do is change it up a little bit. And since we're working with the adorable owls stamp set, that's what I used for today's treat box. And I kind of modified it a little bit because I needed, I wanted to use oop, this owl because he's got his hands in front of him. And I thought, wouldn't that be cute if we did a little heart punch and had him holding a heart? That would make it Valentine's Day-ish, right? But we don't need the party hat. So I'm going to show you today how I took off his party hat when I stamped him. And we made this adorable little easel box. And it has a drawer that opens up and inside the drawer it holds little candies. So that's today's project. Snowfall, huh, Helen? Helene, we had snow too. I was out this morning. Um shoveling that stuff which I don't like. Um, you might want to do prize patrol again. You have a dollar sign instead of a hashtag. Um, she's entering hashtag prize patrol because that's how you get into the drawing to get today's project. So I would probably mail it flat because it, I'm sure the postal service would smash the heck out of it. But I can send you all the little pieces like pre-scored and ready to go. But to do that, you want to put in hashtag prize patrol. I have a computer over here collecting names and everybody goes into a drawing for that. There we go. Thanks. And Melody made it. Welcome. Uh, Trudy, put no space in between prize and patrol. But yes, thank you. Welcome, everyone. Um, today's project, like I said, uses this adorable owls, and that's something in our celebration brochure, which is going to be for free in January. Um, for January, February, we're running celebration once again, and the new catalog also kicks off, so we'll have this new mini January 5th. And I've already got mine out into the mail, so everybody should have received theirs already. Um, I've been getting emails from people who said they got them. If you did not get them, please let me know. I don't have total faith in the Postal Service. <laughs> um, so let me know because you want to have this adorable catalog because there are so many good sets in it. And we're going to be playing with them as we step into the new year. So let's move down to the desk. Again, this is our fabulous catalog and the new celebration brochure. And the stamp set we're using is the Adorable Owls. So we're going to get started with our little box pieces. Now for the drawer itself, I have a six by six. And I have <laughs> scored it um, an inch and a half from all sides. And so I just stuck it in the scoring tool and I scored it and then spun it, scored it and then spun it. It was just easier that way for me to do. So it's scored all the way around. So that's going to be the drawer that pulls out. To wrap around that drawer, I have this piece here. And I just started off by going, okay, well, how about an inch and a half? And then I moved it over on my trimmer. And I know that my box is three inches. That's what's going to be when the little drawer goes in. This is three inches. So I needed this to be three inches, right? Well, then I started with, you know, let's go inch and a half. And then I said, okay, well, if this is an inch and a half tall on the side. I need this next section to be not just an inch and a half, but a titch over. So I don't know if you can see that but I just went just a little bit past where that um, inch and a half is, and that's where I scored my next line, okay? Then I know that I want the middle part to be three inches, so I put my score on the three inches and scored this. And now, once again, I want my side to be 
just a little over the one and a half. So this is like one and five eighths. Now this was how my brain worked it out. Now in the tutorial that I'm gonna provide um, in my tutorial store, I'll obviously have all the little measurements with the diagram and all of the score lines, but I wanted you to know how this works. I mean, how we come up with these sizes is we kind of figure out that we know it's gonna be three inches wide, that was easy. Um, and then we want a little wiggle room for the drawer to go in and out. So that's where the eighth of an inch comes in is it allows that. So those are going to be those two pieces. And then on the top here, I wanted an easel. So I need something that's going to open like this, right? And I need a section to glue down. And then I need the section to go up. So I have a six by three. So the three inch section will glue to the, the box. This other three inch section I scored at one and a half, that's gonna make my easel. And then I needed one more three by three to be the part that goes up. Okay, you following me? And then this piece I just made a little bit smaller. So this is two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And if that bugs you, you can do two and a two and three quarter by two and three quarter, and you just have a wider border, not a big deal. But if I wanted to make this bigger, I mean, if I wanted a four by four drawer or a, you, you know, this is how the way I'm explaining it, it allows you to change the size of the box, I guess is what I'm trying to get at. But my tutorial will have exact measurements and I'm, I told you how I figured it out. So you should be able to make the one I did or make a new one that has different sizes. And of course, you know, if you get confused and you need some help, that's what I'm here for. Just shoot me a message. I'm always more than happy to help. Okay, this piece here, I'm going to take out these score lines. So I'm cutting twice, just either side of the indented material. I guess is that what I want to say? I'm just removing the score line. So then I'll cut those little pieces off. And this just removes any bulk when I go to fold it up. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And I'm just removing those score lines and then just snipping them off. So to make this the bottom of the box or the drawer, what I'm gonna to need to do is just fold these two things in and these up. So I know that's kind of hard to see as I'm working all in black. But basically I'm taking these tabs and I'm moving them in. And then I'm gonna attach them to this back piece. Okay, so I'm just gonna take and put adhesive on those tabs and then fold them in. And you can do this with tear and tape or you can do this with liquid glue. Tear and tape is really strong and I usually recommend that for boxes. Freaks some people out that there's not the wiggle time. And our glue is pretty strong. So that's the next option is that allows you to kind of wiggle this around. I'm getting focus. And make sure that you're lined up exactly on the edge. Okay, so I've got my seam right in here. And that's just ensuring that my box is squared up. And for the most part, it's making them butt up to each other on the inside. So the two tabs are touching each other right there. 
And then I'm noticing there's a little bit that I didn't quite snip off of my score line. So I'm just doing this to clean it up. Not a big deal. But now we have the bottom of our box or our little drawer. Okay, now I want to decorate it. I want to be able to put this around it. Now, again, I've talked about how when we apply designer series paper, when we make those bends, it kind of tugs a little at the designer series paper. So my, the score lines are not ex as exact. So I tend to go around and finger press. That's what I'm calling this when I kind of fold it over. And then I'm coming back in and I'm folding it this way and making this a firmer crease. And when I do that, it allows me to make sure I'm lined up here. So again, that's gonna be squared. I'm gonna follow up to this one, do the same thing. Finger press, pinch, pull it back. And it's, I did 10 inches. And so it's just going to match up and I'll just make sure that's, you know, in the back or on the side somewhere where it's not going to be seen. Um, if this little gap, see, that's the difference of whether I'd scored it exact. Um, it needed that little, I don't know, 16th of an inch. So you could cut this instead of 10 inches by, was it one and three eighths? You could have done a little over and it could have overlapped but that's what I needed in order to get this ready to glue on. Then I can come in with my adhesive and I could again do the liquid or I could do tear and tape or even seal. But I needed to make sure I had done that part first as all my finger pinching. So then I'm gonna just square it up, make sure I'm wrapping around. There we go, that fits a little better. Okay. And then being the liquid glue, I have some time to maneuver it. And I put that on first before I punched, I'm gonna use this punch to punch out this little piece right here. And when I did mine the first time, I did it on this section, which is where these meet up. And so that made it thicker. Instead of going through one layer of cardstock and one layer of DSP, I was going through two. So I chose to this time make my finger pull on just the one. And it should punch out easier. Yeah, much easier. Okay, and then that's when my candy would fit into this. And it would hold four of those. Now for this to wrap around, I'm going to need it to overlap right there. And so... Again, I could use liquid or we can use seal or tear and tape. And I'm using the drawer in there as I bring this together because that's what's keeping me square. Okay, and I did an eighth of an inch clearance. You could do, I have some friends that do a sixteenth of an inch. I find my customers get freaked out by that. So this has a little more room, but it easily moves in and out. Okay, now I'm gonna take and do the finger pressing idea with this. This is my piece to wrap around. So again, it's two and seven eighths. So I've got my skinny little border. Um, I want it to do its um, gap on the bottom. So I'm gonna start here. 
and then I'm going to finger press and do this. And then finger press. So how's everybody doing? Have y'all got your Christmas cards mailed? The trees up and decorated? Lights outside? All that good stuff? We finally got all of our ornaments up on the tree. So I took some pictures of some of my favorite of the Hallmark ornaments that we have still. The kids took all of theirs or the kids were given theirs. Um, so I just have the ones from my husband and I, but it's still fun to pull them out and have all the memories that go with each ornament from each year. Okay, so I know I want to cut right about there. And have you made your wish list and given it to your loved ones of what you want from Stampin' Up! for Christmas? You know, you can go into your personal um, Stampin' Up! account. You sign in. You then find the, um, the things that you would like to get for Christmas to put on your wish list. And there's a little heart next to that item. If you click the heart. You can, you can add it to a wish list. And if you don't have one already created, it'll ask you, what do you want the name of your list to be? So you call it, you know, Christmas wish list. And then when you've hearted all the things that you want, then you just, um, you can share that list. There's a link to an email um, where you can send it to people and they can buy direct. And now would be a good time to do that because today they're offering free shipping um, on an order of $75 or more. If it's placed today only, that shipping is going to be free, which is super exciting because they have that clearance rack update and they have the last chance items from our holiday catalog all on sale. So you can combine the sale prices with the free shipping and get an awesome deal. And it probably wouldn't arrive in time for Christmas. You know, we're talking about the shipping problems we're having. But I think it's just super cool to know that Stampin' Up! stuff's on its way. So if they got me Stampin' Up! stuff and just had a little, it's coming soon in my stocking, I'd be happy as a clam. I'm talking too much, and so I forgot a step. What I want to do is put this piece which is my easel part onto the box before I wrap around that designer series paper and that will bury it in there. Remember, we love to bury things and so they're not visible. And the liquid glue gave me the time to run around and do that. Eek. Okay, come on center, center. So my easel is in there and buried under the designer series paper and this still slides in. Okay. See, free shipping gets me all excited and I miss steps. Okay, so then I'm going to put some adhesive here. And then I'm just squaring this up on the bottom. Again, because this is my easel, I only want adhesive on the bottom half, not the top, so it still moves. And then I have my part we're going to be stamping onto, and then we still need to make our stopper. So we're ready to start stamping. Ooh, a February birthday. Me too. When's your birthday? Mine's February 6th. 
And so the Friday night, the third, I'm doing an online party, which is a reverse party where it's my birthday and we're all celebrating, but I'm going to be giving the gifts to you guys. So um, you'll want to make sure that you pop on over to my Facebook page and get yourself reserved for that. Um, it's going to, I did it on the Friday night. I usually do it on a Saturday, but I picked Friday night because it's going to be two, three of two, three. And I like that. I don't know the funny, there's a name for it when the, the date has a, gosh, what's it called? Somebody must know the name where, when it reads the same way, you know, duplicate like that. Um, like our anniversary, we got married on September 22nd, 1990. So it's 09 2290. So it reads the same way forward and backwards. I think stuff like that's just fun. Okay, so now we're going to stamp our tree. And I used the tree from the Sweet Songbirds bundle. I just love that one. And I'm using it because that's the one we're doing our online event with in February. Or no, the end of January. My birthday's in February. That sweet songbird um, stamp camp retreat, whatever we want to call it. That's going to be the 28th, 29th, whatever that Saturday is at the end of the month. And when you register, you register and get the bundle plus all the materials to make all the cards we'll be doing all day long. I do this with another demonstrator from Canada. So she and I take turns demonstrating. Laura does a card, then I do a card, and we do um, 3D items. We give away free gifts. It's like all kinds of fun stuff. So that's my online event. And then I have my live in-person event in May. And so, believe it or not, now is a good time to start thinking about whether or not you want to attend my in-person retreat. May might sound like a really long time, but it's going to come faster than we can think of it, I'm sure. Especially since I need to start getting things ready. I'll start um, making up all of the make and takes and the prizes that you guys get and... Um, reserve the house where we do it. Once the new year kicks over, all that stuff gets started. Okay, so now we're down to our owl. And I mentioned how I don't want his party hat. Now there's a couple different ways I can do that. We can selectively ink it with an ink spot is really easy or flipping this over and kind of watching from the side and dragging this. We can use the brush tip end of a marker. Um, you can use masking tape or scotch tape to tape over the hat. But the idea is that you just want to make sure that those lines do not have any ink on them. So it was really easy for me to do with the pad, just flipping it over, watching from the side, and making sure that the corner hit the top of his head, but not the hat. If I had hit the hat, I would bring in um, a little simply chamois or paper towel or baby wipe, something to just gently kind of drag along the edge. Am I in camera? Sorry. You would kind of just take and remove that. But that will allow me to go ahead and stamp him without the party hat. And then I didn't get it punched out in time, but wouldn't, a, wouldn't him holding a little heart look adorable? Okay, so... Now we're ready to color, and just really quickly, I'm going to bring in a few Stampin' Blends. Um, so I've got some Dark Daffodil Delight. We'll do his beak. I probably ought to go online and look up and see what owls really look like. 
I'm kind of thinking Winnie the Pooh and I'm coloring him like the owl on there and that may or may not be correct. My daughter was a huge Winnie the Pooh fan when she was little. Now that she's almost 30, she's switched over and now she's a fan of the Lion King, you know, so grown up. Okay, so this is one of our numbered um, blends. I often forget about mentioning them because they're not part of our standard colors, but they are in our catalog as a set. They were brought out when we had a diversity set, when they had lots of hands and they were trying to get all the various um, skin colors. But I find myself using them for things. I mean, I use it for that, but also for additional things. 126, 128, because they're just good browns and ivories and let's see, there we go. But you'll find them down here. Sometimes when they have these pages where there's multiple items, they don't things don't really pop out at us. And so it's on page 128 down here at the bottom, the natural tones. And so this is one of the deep. Um, back when they first released them, they had numbers, but now they've paired them up. And there's these ones down here. So just to let you know that they're not listed with our other ones, they're separate. So I think sometimes when things aren't where we expect them to be, they get lost because the catalog is so big. But that's where you would find them. And I do have Monday's project finished. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, and so I know what I'm doing. I'll show that at the end. So hang out. You'll want to see what I'm making because it's really fun. We're going to be using the whiskey business and doing some techniques. So even if you're thinking, oh, goodness, I don't do the whiskey set. That's not, you know, I don't need masculine cards, whatever. You're going to want to stick around because we're using some techniques that you can use with anything. So I try to make that apparent when I'm picking projects. I try to pick things that even if that particular thing that you're, you know, that I'm showcasing, say you don't like the owls or you don't celebrate Valentine's Day, you can still use the fold or the box or, you know, the idea for other things. So that's part of the creative process is, you know, you come to me for ideas, but it's basically stimulation. You know, I'm not intending you to copy me verbatim. I mean, I want you to be able to take the ideas and apply them to whatever it is that you, you know, are looking to do. Okay, so when I colored this, I got a little bit too much into his eye. So in order to fix that, I want my color lifter. And I'm going to go into his eye and I'm going to push that direction. So I'm not going over the, the line, but I just stayed in here and I pushed and look, now it's gone. So if you use Stampin' Blends and you don't have 
the color lifter because you weren't really sure you needed it, that's just one of the many things you can do with it. Okay, now we're ready for a little bit of ink blending. I'm going to bring in my new teeny tiny blending brush. Now I could have masked over them if I was worried that I was going to um, get blue onto the owl where I don't want it. I think my browns are dark enough that it's really not going to matter. I just need to make sure I don't hit his eyes. But masking paper would have helped with that. And also that's what these smaller brushes are good for. You know, a, a bigger brush may have given me less control when trying to go in there and blend around him instead of over the top of him. <laughs> yeah, little kids would probably love this to hold little Barbie parts, huh? Or clothes. Okay, so this guy's ready to go onto here. And then all we need is our stopper. And the stopper can be anything. Now I made it the sentiment. You can make it anything you wish. The idea is you just want it something that's popped up a little so that it will hold that open. So I could have done that as a flower. I could have done it as just a circle, maybe a heart, anything. Um, I did the sentiment and I just kind of fussy cut it. So bring in my real red because that's the color in this designer series paper. This designer series paper is new. It's from the new catalog. And this punch that's going to be coming out punches out this whole thing. Um, I always love to point out when it does that. The punch will cut out both hearts and both leaves. So there's a new punch that will do that. And then there's just some really pretty flowers and some hearts. And again, I always point out how I love that Stampin' Up! will make one side pretty specific, you know, like our hearts are on one side, but the back may not be as, you know, Valentine's Day-ish. I love the bicycle. I thought that was great. Got more hearts. So just really pretty paper. If you wanted to see all the stuff that I got, there is a YouTube video up that shows everything I got in my pre-order and I there we go. Um, go through all of the designer series papers that I got in that first bunch um, more eloquently than I did right there. <laughs> that was just kind of a ooh, shiny object squirrel. Okay, so I'm fussy cutting around this, and when I do, I move the paper instead of the scissors. And that's on purpose because my hands are more comfortable in this position holding the scissors, you know, naturally. And so turning the paper instead of my hand is just more comfortable. So once I fussy cut that one, then I just glued it to red. Oops. 
a little too much glue. Then I'm going to fussy cut around this. Oop. This one has adhesive sheet on the back. I didn't intend to do that. Do you guys use the adhesive sheet? I love that stuff. It's great for detailed dyes because you can put it on the cardstock first and then die cut and then all you have to do is peel off the backing and it's a ready-made sticker. So there's no trying to figure out, you know, how to apply liquid glue or, you know, snail to the back of something um, without getting it through the holes because all you have to do is peel it off and then this is sticky and all ready to put onto your project. Again, one of those things that, you know, just gets lost in the catalog. So I happen to mention it quite frequently in case anybody doesn't know. Thank you, Joanne. That's very sweet. Okay. So I'm going to use minis because I want it kind of hidden and I think the regulars would be too big. If you don't have the minis, then take your regulars and cut them in half or use the sides. Just cut them up till they fit. But I'm raising it up so that this will catch. And I kind of get it ready, decide where I want this to stop at, and then I just set it down. Make sure I'm straight. And there we go. Okay. I need this to be a tighter fold. There we go. And there we go. <laughs> There's actually two. I have two poodles. I have um, Sophie. Come here, Sophie. Come here. Come here. This is Sophie. This is my good girl. She's a miniature poodle. And then I have Pixie, who's a toy poodle. Come here, Pixie. This one's Pixie. And I love her coat because look, her the back of her fur is a heart. I don't know if you can quite make it out, but she's really cute. Hey, don't fight. Okay. So who's ready to see what we're doing on Monday? I have a fun card. And again, like I said, don't get discouraged. If you don't need masculine cards, you don't need um, whiskey, which is the thing we're using because the techniques on the inside. Now, the outside is really simple, but our fun is on the inside. Look at that. How cute, right? So I've got a little bit of stamping and then I've got my table with the the whiskey and the glasses on there. So I'm going to teach you how we made the table. And you can either do the table and put things on it, or you can um, put the things directly on the bottom. You want to type in hashtag prize patrol without the space in the middle. And what that is, is a drawing that allows you to get into, uh, I have a computer over here collecting the name of everybody who put um, hashtag prize patrol into the chat and it's going to pick a winner and then they will get today's project. Now, because today's project was 3D, what they'll get is all the pieces pre-cut and ready to go. But this will be Monday's project so I can teach you how we're going to do the pop-ups that all fold up and then we're also going to work on what we call the glass technique. Now, I don't know if you can quite catch it, but the, um, let's see, the bottles, there, let's see, 
are super shiny. So they look like glass. So I'm going to show you how we did that. So that's going to be Monday's project. Okay, Cheryl, one more time, put in hashtag prize patrol, but all together as one word. And Maria, no space between the hashtag and the prize patrol. The computer's really picky. If I was doing this myself, it'd be okay, but the computer doesn't recognize it unless it's exactly like it wants it to be. So hashtag prize patrol, all one word, no spaces. So I'm going to give a couple minutes so Cheryl and Maria can pop that in there and then we'll be ready to spin. So here is our screen. Yeah, Monday's card is fun. I'm excited about that one. There's several things that you can make pop up on the inside that are super fun. And sometimes you can even make a little like hole on the outside that'll, you can see what's going to pop up from outside, inside the card. I'm not, that's not making sense. I will show you on Monday, another card where the featured part that pops up, you can see through an oval or circle on the front of the card. Okay, we got those extra two in there. We're ready to spin. Let's see who today's winner is. Oh, yes, definitely make shaker cards. I've done shaker cards that are done with our um, foam strips, and I've also done them where we use the clear envelopes. I'm so glad you're here. I hope you come back. See, and you're a winner. Like, check that out. <laughs> How exciting is that? First time here, and you're today's winner. Congratulations, Cheryl. So make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel and that you have the alerts turned on. I'm going to, after this is over, I'm going to schedule Monday's live. So you'll be able to go into my videos on my YouTube channel and click the little thing that says remind me. And it will tell you when I go live. So thank you for joining me and I will see you on Monday. And in the meantime, pop on over to the YouTube channel and um, check out those other cards. You can search um, Shaker Card or Queen Bee Creation Shaker Card from within my channel, and there will be several. If you don't find them right away, pop me an email or hit me up on Facebook, and I can give you a link. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you back here on Monday. Thanks a lot. Bye.